Hi, thanks for joining me. So today I just want to do a, another pickups video. Uh, and honestly, I'm doing this as much for me as I am for you guys. Um, I've been working really hard and I'm pretty burnt out. So I just wanted to take an hour or two tonight, um, play a couple of these games I've picked up so I can give you guys my impressions, you know, just sort of initial impressions about them and just let you see what I have here. Um, it's just a nice little break for me. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. We have Need for Speed Rivals. Uh, I mentioned this in my last video. This actually isn't really mine, it's my friend's, but it's kind of on extended loan until he gets a PlayStation 4. So um, actually I was really interested in this uh, in terms of uh, really just thinking of this like Chase HQ because you can play as the cops or the racers. You know, that said, I've had a really hard time getting into this because I found it to just be really hard and challenging and it's just kind of off-putting a little bit too. I don't know what it is about it. So I'm going to try um, playing this again, but uh, I have that for the PlayStation 4. Uh, additionally, going um, a lot more retro, um, I was on a big Sega Genesis kick, and uh, you might remember I picked up Dragon's Revenge. So um, to go along with that, I realized that there is Dragon's Fury, and this uh, is basically the Sega Genesis version of Devil's Crush for like the Turbo Graphics uh, or PC Engine. Um, so it's it's pretty neat. I mean, I, I really like both of these games. I just popped it in and checked it out, and um, it really took me back. Like I, I would have had so much fun with these back in the day, and, and I'm enjoying them now. Um, they're just a video pinball game, but they they have just a, such a great style. Dragon's Revenge is sort of like a little more high fantasy. And this is like, um, I mean, it's sort of when it was called Devil's Crush. I mean, it's a lot of kind of like pagan and sort of like demonic uh, sort of imagery and stuff like that. It really, definitely the kind of thing that probably, you know, they, they programmed just to scare your parents when, when you were a kid. Um, but, uh, you know, it's it, that's fun. It's, it's like fun uh, um, visual like style to it. And um, just a neat little uh, pinball uh, game on the Genesis. I'm actually really having fun with that. Uh, additionally, I got Atomic Runner I had shown off before. This is a previous purchase, but I picked up uh, the manual for it. So I now have a complete version of this. Um, you guys might remember I got this for like six bucks. It was super cheap. Uh, it's not in the greatest of shape, but now with the manual it's complete. And I actually spent ten dollars on the manual. I spent more on that than I did on the, the whole game and the case and the artwork and everything. But um, but sixteen bucks for this copy of Atomic Runner. I think that's pretty good uh, for what I got, and um, it's a really cool game. So glad to have that complete. Um. And honestly, lastly, for my games, uh, in addition to my PS4, I really just got uh, these uh, three games and one manual. Uh, I picked up for the PlayStation 3 uh, Aqua Pazza, uh, Aqua Plus Dream Match. Um, so this is a 2D fighter, and it features characters from a bunch of Aqua Plus games. Now, um, you know, it's interesting for me, I, I kind of wonder who the audience for this is, and I have to assume that it's 2D fighting fans that like this kind of stuff. Um, I'm thinking people that like like Arcana Heart, or um, like the people that bought Persona uh, 4 Arena. Um, now, I was one of those people that bought Persona 4 Arena, but I got it mostly because I read that it has sort of a visual novel element to it, and that's the part that I was more interested in, uh, especially in games like uh, Blaz Blue. You know, I noticed that it has that same kind of thing, and I sort of just liked the story parts of it uh, a little bit more than the than the fighting. So I was hoping to get um, a little bit of a foot into the Persona world via that game. I still haven't played much of it, so I don't know. This one so far. Um, the story just seems like generic, um, sort of cross-dimensional kind of story. Um, it was just really just an excuse to have all the characters in one game, so it's not very interesting. Um, as far as a fighter goes, it seems to be kind of a throwback to um, to older fighters. There's an interesting mechanic where you have to um, like keep fighting. Like the more you fight and the more active you are, um, the greater your emotion. Uh, increases, and uh, I haven't quite figured out what that does for you, but I guess um, they, they don't want people to play really defensively in this. They want the, to keep this kind of snappy and active, so um, there's incentive to uh, to play more aggressively in this game, which is interesting. And, um, you know, it has characters from a, a bunch of different uh, games here. Now, um, I have to imagine that, um, you know, people picking this up probably um, won't be familiar with 
uh, the games that um, these characters come from probably are going to be more familiar with them from anime that um, have been made from a lot of these games. But, um, you know, still I feel like I was voting with my wallet a little bit, and uh, you know, I figured I'd throw him a bone. Um, I got this pretty cheaply. It was like 25 bucks, And in the hopes that... Um, you know, maybe Aqua Plus at least gets a little bit more of my money, um, you know, and, and Atlas sees that, you know, having bothered to try to bring this over, you know, maybe it's really only a vote for more fighting games based on this stuff, but I'm hoping that it means that, you know, who knows, maybe Aqua Plus's next Vita game or something gets, you know, localized by Atlas, I, I don't know. Um, but just uh, just to kind of show off my Aqua Plus collection here a little bit, I guess, um, I have this one here, this is... Uh, uh, Teneretsa on the uh, Xbox, actually. So um, I have my Xbox hooked up where I can capture footage from it now, so maybe I'll, you know, someday um, capture a little footage from some Xbox games in my collection and show them off to you guys. But he here's a, an Aqua Plus uh, game here. Uh, of course, Comic Party. I don't know if you guys have been watching my Dreamcast pickups, you'll remember this one. Um, this uh, characters from this are featured in uh, Aquapazza, uh, as well as White Album, of course. Uh, very, very cool game. Um, these characters are only support characters, but you have actually kind of both of the, the main heroines uh, appear in Aquapazza. Um, White Album 2, this is also an Aqua Plus game. Uh, none of these characters that I know of appear in Aquapazza, so kind of too bad. I don't know if they'll have some DLC or a sequel or you know, whatever. But um, the other one that is featured very heavily in the game is uh, uh, Tears to Tiara. Um, this is one that I got um, with kind of grand expectations when I was starting my Play Ongo blog. I really wanted to dig into this. I've captured footage from it. I was planning to do a big write-up on it, but I wanted to beat the game. And um, partway through, I just found the battle system too tedious to really want to keep me, keep going through the game, um, but I did enjoy my time with it, uh, what I spent on it, and I even have like the big cool Japanese game guide and everything, um, it's got all the, you know, different characters and, you know, just all the normal game guide sort of stuff, so, um, yeah, so, you know, I definitely have a lot of Aqua Plus games, so I wanted to go ahead and add uh, Aqua Pazza Dream Match to my collection, um, so that's about it for games, um, I actually, uh, I'll go ahead and talk some other um, pickups here too, I guess, just really briefly. Um, after I got all those Hyperdoll comics, uh, I, it started me thinking, I was like, man, you know, what's what's going on? Are there any more? Because it just sort of leaves off at a cliffhanger. From what I read, the, um, the m sort of book that it was being serialized in, that particular manga magazine, um, was just canceled suddenly. They were just like, all right, we're not doing this anymore. So, um, you know, it seems like it's creator-owned because the creator, you know, has has kept going with it a little bit. So it looks like with another, um, you know, publisher, uh, he did some compilation volumes. This is actually um, the kind of like the first half uh, of Hyperdoll that I've already read in English. And then, oh, I'm sorry, I actually have them backwards. This is the first half. <laughs> And then this is the uh, the second half. So right here we see the Mica side end, and there's new Hyperdoll. Or Hyperdoll is not end. New production is coming soon. So um, you know that was very encouraging. But what I found is shortly after these volumes came out, he started doing uh, Dojin, um, and you know selling it at stuff like Comic Market and, and things like that. So he has he has Dojinshi. Um, of hyper dolls, and it's it's you know it's not anything different. Like he's just continuing the the regular story. So um, what I have here is the most recent um, hyper doll Dojinshi. This is 6.5. I think he's considering that these went through like five volumes. So um, so I guess he's got volumes like I think it's six one through six five. So there's at least four more of these that I don't have. And unfortunately, um, he's been doing this for, you know, five, six years or so. I think he's doing like one a year. So it's just, uh, it's a little harder for me to get my hands um, on this stuff. I really, I sort of checked around at the, you know, the places that I would know to get this kind of thing. And, um, you know, without actually me going to Comic A and, and picking this stuff up, it's, it's a little challenging. So, um... Anyway, I don't know if you guys, you know, if you guys can hook me up with <laughs> the 
the previous doujinshi volumes that uh, Shinpei Ito has released for uh, Hyperdoll, um, you know, please get in get in touch with me. Uh, I would be very interested in that. But um, I'll, you know, just be trying to get them on my own. Um, I definitely have um, some some ways, so I'll be keeping an eye out for those. Um, and I guess I just want to talk a little bit about the anime that I've been watching. If you guys are interested, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, some interesting stuff this season. Um, one that really stands out is Kill La Kill, and I have to admit it's one that I I, I didn't really like at first. It, it you know I, I didn't warm up to the first episode of it very much. Well, the, the first episode was too frenetic and too crazy for me, but I said you know I'm, I'm going to stick with this. And by the I don't know the second or third episode I was really hooked. Um, I thought I thought it was really neat. So um, basically, it's the kind of plot that anybody out there has already had. You know, I've thought of it. My friend thought of it. We were like, "Oh yeah, let's let's do our comic. We're gonna we're gonna do it, this exact same plot, basically, where it's like you have a high school where the high school students like wear uniforms that have superpowers. You know, it 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 does not take a genius to come up with this premise. But um, you know, that aside, I. Uh, they they went with it, and I think they did a good job with it. Um, it's it, there's something about it that's really engaging. Um, the characters are kind of fun. Um, I just like. I mean, essentially, the the main character, the girl, like she wears this this sailor suit that's um, you know that's like living basically, and and it gives her superpowers. Um, but it's all to kind of like find out who uh, murdered her father. This is, it's so cliche. It's really funny. And, um, but, like, the main sort of evil character, you know, the bad guy, the bad girl in this case, um, she kind of runs this high school where it's got this really hierarchical, um, kind of class structure. And it's kind of this microcosm for, I don't know, just class differences in society and stuff. And, um, and it's, it's fun and interesting. And I actually really like that character. I like the, um, the sort of the main kind of bad guy character, maybe a little, a little bit more than the than the good, or at least as much as the good character. Um, so it's interesting. It's very interesting to watch. I'd recommend you guys check it out if you haven't had a chance. Uh, and the, you know, there's also like fan service and a whole bunch of fighting, like in like crazy suits with weird powers. It's, it's cool. I mean, it's it's one of those kind of things. Um, additionally, I've been watching uh, uh, Non Non Biori, which is uh, another one of those ones that's just like kind of really mellow. Um, it's it reminds me of, I mean, it's a slice of life show basically. So uh, it reminds me a little bit of Boku no Natsuyasumi, where it's set out in the country, and um, and they they poke fun at that too. Um, this girl from Tokyo, like for whatever reason, her family ends up working out in the country and it's like way out in the country so uh, and it's great because like I kind of live in that sort of place myself so um, you know I like being surrounded by mountains and rivers and trees and and this show really is kind of plays up like the the beauty of that and kind of like just the um, I think what's nice about um, sort of being in a small town like going to a small school and literally it's really small like there's I think five students in the whole school and they span you know all different grades they're all just being taught in the same room and um, but it's cute the characters are fun and um, you know it's just kind of a nice slice of life uh, story uh, I'm not quite sure what the name means um, it sounds a little bit like like non bidi which is like l kind of laid back you know, it's like kind of how I think of the show, um, and it definitely has like the one character that sticks out. It's like the the girl that's in first grade. She she has that sort of Konata from Lucky Star aspect to her, where it's like everybody else looks kind of the same, and then you have this one character that looks different. You know, she's like she's short, her hair is different colored, and like her color scheme is not the same as everybody else's, and she always has she she always has one of Konata's expressions too. It's sort of like the triangle mouth. It's it's really funny. Um, and I guess lastly, I've been watching the new season of Genshiken. Um, that is the uh, like Society for the Study of Visual Culture, or something like that. It's a um, basically this story of like a anime manga sort of jack of all trades club at this uh, this college in in Japan. I mean, it's 
that's just the story of it. I don't think that it actually exists, but um, but it's funny. It really reminds me of my days, um, sort of running the anime club at my uh, at my school, and um, yeah, it's just uh, it's fun. I, I just watched a couple episodes of the the newest season. Um, it p- is picking up where like people from the first season have graduated and they've moved on. So you have some people that were in like. I think that, I almost think there was a second season, or at least a part two to the original one. So there's characters from that that are kind of now the um, the senpai in in this uh, version, and uh, their their kohai are um, you know they're they have new members that are joining, and um, you know so you get to be introduced to some new characters, and it's just you know, it's fun. So anyway, um, that's about all. Uh, I've talked for a long time again. And, uh, yeah, I um, just wanted to share some of that with you guys today. Um, I hope that you guys had a good Thanksgiving, and um, you know, hope everybody had a safe kind of Black Friday. I don't know if you guys got any good you know, deals or anything like that. Um, I didn't do a lot of shopping. You know, I didn't buy stuff for myself or anything like that. I'm just kind of taking it easy right now. So that's all. Thank you for uh, joining me, and I hope you'll join me again for more video game-related videos.